Between 1980 and 1982, the English Beat were one of the leading bands on the UK music scene. And from their 1981 album, What Happened, the track Over and Over. Now already, I really like the figure that has taken shape. We've got that, that D minor bass and those kind of echoey guitar tones. Um, throwing in some sevenths, I think I hear some. The chord is like juxtaposing, I think, between D major and D minor seventh. Let's catch up with the lyrics here and see what they're about. Promise your secrecy into the microphone into the megaphone, into the cell, questioning decency under the microscope. Over and over, then over and over. Let's see, promise your secrecy into the microphone. Huh, into the megaphone, into the cell. Um, so far, okay, I'm, I'm curious. Maybe, maybe more lyrics will reveal where this is going. Organize my life over the telephone, over my dead body, over my head. Tread a fine line between you and your memories. Interesting line. Between you and me, things are best left unsaid. So this is kind of about clandestine operations. The honoring of violence is a security number. Oh, maybe this is about, uh, yeah, carrying out covert operations of some kind. Always so quiet, it slips under your guard. Pushes your dead body under the microscope over and over. It's over, say, over and out. Hmm. So maybe it has something to do with military covert operations of some kind. Or... <laughs> Now, I really like the arrangements here, that, that sax and the steel pan against that, that really compelling key center. Um, and the instrumentation on this album, let's see, um, steel pan is played, steel drum is played by Dick, a fellow by the name of Dick. Um, and uh, of course, saxophone by Saxa. A lot of just a uh, single, like, monosyllabic names here. And of course, the vocals on this track are by their recently deceased uh, ranking Roger. <laughs> Caribbean vibe to it. Oh, you, when you have these kind of arrangements, it's like you just find a, a simple yet effective key center. Um, and when you throw in like a, like, like these minor, like, I, I believe it's a, one of those ones that's like triad type. Um, and you just kind of shuffling between the D and, and then bringing down like the, oh, going down to like seven minor and then throwing in some steel pans which have that kind of glow tone to them. 
and that kind of billowing sax. It's just, it's such a, a summery, tropical type vibe. It's just, e even if the lyrics are dealing with darker subject matter. I Interestingly, that bass line we were hearing at the beginning seems to have disappeared for now. Now we're getting some pretty uh, jittery rhythmic components working their way in. Drums on this album by Everett Morton. Uh, yeah, I really do miss uh, David Steele's bass. Um, hopefully that makes a comeback before this song ends. Um. Well, we got the bass here. It's kind of in the pocket, or it's it's kind of muted. Um, but of course, the main attraction, as it has turned out, has been that steel pan. Um, a moment ago, we were also hearing some very subtle guitar parts from either Andy Cox or David Wakeling, although both seem to be pretty much taking a back seat on this number. <laughs> Oh yeah, I can hear just these slightly in the background faint, snaky little guitar lines, but they're so low in the mix. Okay, now that uh, as it's fading out, that, that riff we were hearing at the beginning, that kind of echoey tone that we were hearing earlier in the song was, was by one of the two guitarists. Perhaps uh, David Wake, Wakeling. Beautiful. You know, I could have I, I, I could have easily um, accepted that track as like a seven minute instrumental jam. If if that 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 last that fade out had if that that had just been elongated. But I mean, it, it's over and done in two minutes and forty. But with that fade out, like what here here I say it once again. I, I wonder how long they actually jammed over that figure um, on tape. Um, you know, because they, they have to keep on playing so they can, like, have it have it seem like they're just, like, playing infinitely as, as the track fades. And, and I, I just wonder how much ended up on the cutting room floor. Um, yeah, I, I wonder if, did they, did they just end it abruptly, ultimately, or did they just kind of break up or stop playing one by one or something? Um, okay, uh, the... Three more verses to go. Another incident, another accident. Dangerous emptiness, people in shock. You pelt them with rocks. Okay, I guess we're dealing with um, counterinsurgency, perhaps, in the third world. And the old innuendo, no, that was no mishap. That break line was cut. Lie on the pavement, wait for an ambulance, say to yourself nothing is what it seems, Never meaning to say, you never say what you mean. You get caught by the sirens on your TV screen. So um, people who are responsible or complicit in some of the bloodshed that makes it onto the news and yet trying to just absolve themselves in, in, in the best, it, with, with just circular logic. Um, the honoring of violence is a security number, always so quiet it slips under your guard, pushes your dead body under the microscope over and over and over, and then over and out, over and out, over and out, over and out. I guess it's just about um, talk between people who were, who were just taking orders to, to kill innocent people, perhaps. Um, over and over off the 1981 WAPN by the uh, the beat, or as they're known outside the UK, the English beat. And um, let's hear another track from the album, another one of the highlights, Get a Job. There's a training cause for boys and girls and put up the shot. Stop. 
Interestingly, this too is in like the the D. The the tonic is D, and we've got kind of like a oh like like I think maybe a seventh in there, and and, and it D minor. Let's see. There's a training course where boys and girls of real ambition start a new job in a factory where they're making ammunition. These are these lyrics are a bit more self-evident. But it makes them think of stealing when they read between the lines through the owners of this fun fair, you won't find a ride you like. Just get a job. Okay, yeah. Um about people just kind of getting into the gr young people just entering the workforce, getting into the grind, um, and contemplating whether it would be easier just to rob a bank or something, um, and just be done, and just be set for um, a length of time. Yeah, that could be pretty tempting for people that work at like ATM. Uh, work in the back rooms of, of, of banks and such. And once again, uh, Sachs uh, demonstrating himself as the pretty much the primary instrumental attraction of this group. It should be noted, um, Saxa, real name Lionel Augustus Martin, born in Jamaica uh, January 5th, 1930, passed away uh, just under two years ago. And um, yeah, he, a unique addition, and he was brought in as a full-fledged fledged member, a, a, definitely a unique addition to be bringing in to uh, a band of guys like mostly like about 30 years his junior, M most of the members being born like in 1959, 1960 thereabouts. And I gotta say, the guitar is a bit more prominent in this one, and once again, we got those thin, kind of echoey tones going on throughout. Um, this band, um, one of the reasons why this uh, band survived the initial blast of two-tone ska in, in 1980 um, is because they did more unique things with their instrumental, their, their tone out, the tones of their instruments, the effects, they, they utilized some unique arrangements and they were just able to, like this is just a year after the, the big two-tone craze and they've expanded in ways that um, some of the others, some of the others got caught in that real staccato, like and I don't know, once it got labeled, there, there uh, wasn't, uh, some of them, some of it, it was a hard act to follow for some of them. But but this band, I think it's because the English beat were were not just interested in the pop, punk aspects of cod reggae, but they were actually influ They were actually interested in in like they they had much more of a an encompassing range and knowledge and and acumen for the music coming out of Jamaica. <laughs> Let's see. Um, 
Manufacture rubbish, although no one can afford it. You could make a profit more than anyone deserves. So you find you're left with poison, so you dump it in our water. So create the kind of problems only radiation cures. Okay, now we've we've shifted gears a bit. Now now we're talking about um, other ramifications that that other byproducts of of the workforce like pollution, like um like one industry, uh you know, generates you know pollution and and um greenhouse gases and and, and therefore another industry has to emerge to counter that. Um, and let's see, oh, you young people are revolting, eight to five, life should give the jolt needed, in a few years you won't feel quite the same, you'll be playing their get it a job game. So after a few years, these young people who are trying to make maybe the most of it on weekends, on their time off, going out clubbing and such, in a few years they're not going to have that energy anymore. You know, like, these guys are going to go out, they're going to get girls knocked up, they're going to end up, you know, just saddled with responsibilities, you know, living in tenements, you know, hungry mouths to feed, and so they're, they're, there's not going to be as much fun, um, you know, on their, on the off work hours, it's, and, and they're going to be much more serious about, about their job, because by then it's going to be way too late for them to fall back on their parents, you know, and um, once because once you cross that 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 line into adulthood, there's really no going back. <laughs> I gotta say, I just love this whole figure and the, the uh, precision with which it's going, the um, the well placed rhythmic structure component, the um, way the guitars are just kind of refined and like cutting in and blending accents and. It's amazing we have two guitarists in the band, and yet both are so refined. Neither um, dominate. They just each add little detail. Like one's adding little lines, another is adding like uh, just kind of subtle rhythmic elements. And the bass is really. Um, giving sort of a contour to the underlying structure, yet it's not really fighting too hard for attention. Everything is just so kind of woven and equal. And like, uh, ranking, uh, <coughs> ranking Roger is quite, quite prominent on this. And, um... <laughs> Basically, um, Saxa and Ranking Roger really dominate this, and, and, and all the other instruments are just kind of equally creating this whole sonic wave of, um, of just compelling thrust that's, uh, that when you find the right key center for it, you can just work wonders as, as long as everyone is playing their part. <laughs> Now here's more the skanking part. What distinguishes this band's songwriting from the likes of, say, the specials, is that the specials tended to stay within these type of key centers, like simple, like. G, C, you know, um, whereas um, the, the two songs that I've played here have been exploring more the, the, the tonal variations of like a single key, like exploring minors, sevenths, you know, um, and over, over a tonic, as well as majors, and um, 
It's, it's a more sophisticated approach to composition. So it, it also lends more for jamming, for instrumentation, and, and, and uh, breaking out and expanding on instrumentally. <laughs> And now the bass is really kind of a bit more prominent and, and the sax just doing those beautiful notes, those tones that... And another just very compelling, ingratiating fade out where, where it could just like go on, for, it could go on a lot longer. And yeah, Get a Job by uh, The Beat, or as they're known to us, you know, around the world, the English beat, from the 1981 uh, What Happened album on released in the UK on Go Feet Records and in the US on IRS. Um, both songs sung, both this and the uh, last song we heard over and over, sung by the recently deceased Ranking Roger, passed away at 58 last week. Um, yeah, rest in peace. Great band. Um, yeah, one of the uh, leading English bands of the early 1980s. Um, for more rubies and sapphires from the catalog of The Beat, a.k.a. The English Beat, see the directory of albums by English B artists. Yeah, I relented and I, I, tend, to, I, I tend to call them The English Beat, although I, um, on RYM, they're, um, they're officially named The Beat. That, 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 that's the name that, that dominates in most media, and so they're filed under B. And um, <clears throat> for um, tasty reds and purples from this album, as well as the one before it and the one after it. They did three albums. And um, like and subscribe and follow me on social media and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about these lyrics, about the music, or anything I could have pointed out that, that I didn't. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear travel tremaximalist, signing off. <laughs>